if you go to the UK health sites, if you go to the health sites for many governments, you will find assurances from the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection that wireless radiation is really relatively safe and that we don't have any reasons for concern, for example, about 5G. Uh, my colleagues and I do not agree with that interpretation, and we think that when one looks at independent science, you get a very different view. We are in a situation that is absolutely unprecedented. Every single one of the regulatory agencies that are supposed to be protecting our health are doing just the opposite. They're protecting the industry by using safety guidelines that we know do not predict biological effects and therefore do not predict safety. And therefore, to call them safety guidelines is simply fraudulent. There is no science there. Natural electromagnetic fields, they interact constantly with the physiological endogenous electromagnetic fields. We are attuned, our, our brain oscillations are attuned by the Schumann oscillations, by the atmospheric oscillations. The basic frequency of the Schumann oscillations, 7.8 hertz, is exactly the basic frequency of the alpha rhythms of our brain oscillations. This is not a coincidence. Sperm counts in every single technologically advanced country on Earth have dropped to below 50% of normal. That was as of 2017. And there was a, a mouse study that showed that uh, within a very short time period, mouse reproduction could crash to zero within something like 90 days to 150 days from exposures well within our safety guidelines. The studies we did were the whole animal studies. Every known human carcinogen has been shown to be carcinogenic in animals, and in many cases, the animal studies came first. There's been misrepresentation of the data and a number of false statements about the data, which seem to be developed to downplay the importance of the findings. The exposures can be controlled very carefully, so this can eliminate confounding by other factors. And if they are taken seriously, they can avoid the need to wait for the cancer data to develop in humans. Uh, Ramazzini Institute findings on far field exposure are consistent with, uh, if we want to reinforce the results of the NTMP study on near field exposure. And most of all, the tumors of the brain and heart that were observed in our experimental animal in both the study have the same histological origin on those observed in some epidemiological studies on cell phone users. The past technologies used ubiquitously for decades with our mobile phone, computer, and other device create radiofrequency radiation exposure that represents a serious risk for human, animal, and environmental health. 5G is actually involved in this range of frequencies that has been classified as a possible human carcinogen. Interestingly, this has had no effect on legislation of exposure, reduction of exposure, and so on. So it seems that nobody is caring of this, at least of those who are setting the guidelines. When you look at something that causes oxidative stress or cellular mechanism, we get systemic disruption. It's not surprising when you think about these cellular effects that those are multiple different cell types. That translates to lots of different bodily systems. So we see lots of different endpoints. And amongst these endpoints, you'll see things that are rising dramatically in the public health forum. So here, we're seeing cancer, migraines, insomnia. These things are rising in our children right now. A lot of us who are medical doctors and scientists don't like to get into the politics, but we're being forced to. You've heard about the ICN standards that have been falsified as protective of health. What you do? Change the scientific approach by shifting to complex system. By this change the current risk assessment. This is a political thing. Train doctors in the complex thinking establish a network of fundamentally educated doctors in order to disseminate expertise quickly. The government has done a wonderful job of instructing the media, the TV, that there's not an issue 
and don't give these people the oxygen of publicity. Although the research might be alarmist, it's accurate. And you only have to see the conflict of interest. you got trillions of dollars of money, so they'll tell you anything they want. We must understand that this is a very large, powerful telecom industry we are dealing with. 50% of all media spend in the UK is wireless mobile phones. So which newspapers brave enough to stand up and complain? Well, every other page is a wireless advert. Government funding for, for this research got cut off between 1986 and 1999, so there is essentially nothing available. We're talking about the fact, first of all, that each of the cells of our bodies are surrounded by a membrane called the plasma membrane. I'm sure you know about that. And in the membrane are these channels, okay? So they are protein molecules that Dr. Panagopoulos has already referred to, which have the property that they can open up a channel and allow ions, in this case calcium ions, to flow into the cell. So normally, you have about 10,000 times the concentration of calcium outside the cell as inside the cell. Normally, calcium levels are kept very low in the cell, except for very, very short time periods when they produce regulatory responses. And what happens then is that when you activate these channels with the EMFs, which is what the EMFs do, they open up, you get huge amounts of calcium ions flowing into the cell. Very serious uh, effects. We have to start decreasing the exposures we already have. Many of these effects are cumulative, and as they become more severe, they become irreversible. We have to stop 5G. That's number one. Promoting the need for solid, independent science. You don't get this from 15 second sound bites. 